I love this guy. I always uh, enjoy uh, running into him whenever I get a chance to chat with him, like just right now. Uh, Black Monday, season two, uh, premiered this past Sunday on Showtime at 10 Eastern Time in his role of Maurice Mo Monroe. Uh, uh, garnered him an Emmy nomination for his season one in 2019. He is the Oscar-nominated actor, Don Cheadle. How are you, Don? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What do you got? You I, was, I was just curled up on the floor uh, crying. I'm fine now. I'm back. Why, I'm are you, back. why are you curled on the floor, Don? Come on now. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Life? <laughs> no. Life in no general? Real reason. <laughs> Life in general? That your show's yeah. called Black Monday and the markets are really tanking? That sort of thing? Maybe, so I mean, there's some bright side, right? I mean, at least we did prestige that. That's, uh, that's good, I guess. I know that. I know that. But I guess, you know, we can go down a little bit of the uh, the sports uh, uh, wormhole a little bit um, and, and have a little bit of uh, that sort of distraction in a way, you know? Um, yeah. You know. So now, are you are, are 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 you a Brady fan at all? Tom Brady fan at all, or or you? Uh... No. I, I mean, Tom. Yeah, I like Tom personally. He's, right. I'm with him, but I could never ever be a Patriots fan. So, you know, by association, I had to pull him into that you know whirlpool of of distaste. I guess. <laughs> by the way, that's a as great a player, that's a great player. fantasy team name, Whirlpool of Distaste. I do like that one. <laughs> that's not a bad yeah. one. Cause you're a Bronco, you're a Bronco guy, right, Don? That's correct. I'm a I'm a Chiefs guy. I'm Chiefs. A, I mean, I, I was born in Kansas City. I okay. moved out very early. I still have a lot of family there. I moved to Denver, so I always have these sort of AFC, you know, internal struggles. But when the Chiefs play the Broncos, I root for the Chiefs. So the Chiefs. So you must have been beyond ecstatic this past oh, yeah. February. It was great. It was great. Um, I was in Hawaii at the time, and I actually had tickets. And I gave my tickets to a friend, and he went to the Super Bowl, and I got to live it vicariously through him. But it was, uh, it was amazing to watch. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, fifty years in the in in the waiting. Um, so who was your who was your guy growing up from the Chiefs? Who was that guy that you were rooting for for the Chiefs when you were? Well, I just kept rolling through every you know iteration of of the team. Um, it was it was more about the team. It was when Montana came over. I was like, really? And then I was like, whoa, wow! <laughs> you know, it's amazing how when you get new players from other places, you go from hating them to being like, oh, that's my guy now. So it just kind of became a, a, a rotating uh, roster. Yeah, I I know that there's no you know natural distaste for the Patriots maybe from a Tampa Bay Buck fan, but if there is, now they're like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. In the same way that you were just like that for Montana, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, like, oh, this works. This you know, works. you know, it's it's kind, um, it's kind of just like that. Um, yeah, I was I was surprised by that. I, I guess I wasn't surprised by that when you look at all of the what you know all the ancillary stuff that that he can potentially do there now, but. You know, you and I grew up when Tampa Bay was like, you wouldn't touch Tampa Bay with a pencil <laughs> pole. You're like, Tampa Bay? No way. Right, I know, with those creamsicle uniforms. Those yeah. Are, <laughs> you know, those and the record. And that, the record. And the record. The one win, Leroy Selman creamsicle uniform, guys. And now here comes Tom, here comes Tom Brady, you know, uh, down yeah. the pike, you know. Yeah, um, it's amazing. So, uh, what 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 is your other what are you I forget Don What are your other sports that you you're you're into? Pay attention to like what are what are those? You know, I, I I stopped sort of being. It's it's funny. I kind of uh, as as I became more a, a workaholic and the kids are going through school. Just I lost so much time, couch time, sitting focusing on teams that mm -hmm. I still love the game. You know, I'm in LA, so I love the Lakers. I you know I was very much uh, you know when I went to college and we would buy a TV to watch the playoffs and then return it after the playoffs. <laughs> 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 that was my era of being a rabid sports fan, you know, Showtime era for the Lakers. You know, I'm back now because I'm personally, you know, I'm friends with LeBron, but I just went through different cycles of, like, kind of being out of sports, really, just watching the, the game for just the love of the game itself, but not really – die hard about any team specifically all right so you, there's you you said a lot there don to unpack first things first is how does one return a television that has clearly oh. been used can you walk me through that caper that you pulled off don because it, it actually was completely fine you know circuit city best buy all of these places you could return the tv within 30 days so you know we were good we just get through the finals and we'd be like okay and we take the tv back <laughs> and you just give any old reason why and 
You were good. So did you give the reason that uh, the NBA Finals were over? or you, you, you... Yeah, sometimes we did. <laughs> we would just be <laughs> that straight up blatant about it and see what people would say. And, you know, often they'd be like, word, nice. Right. Yeah. And then LeBron, how did you first cross paths with him? Just at first, at you know, at a game and just at other things and the party here or there, or whatever. And then we, you know, worked together. So that was kind of cool. So I spent a lot of time with him then. Which, uh, which, for those who may not know, when did, how did you work with him? Where, which, uh, oh, we, we just did a Space Jam two this last year. Ah, okay. Yeah. Space Jam two. Um, <laughs> what can you tell me about uh, okay. LeBron on that set, Don? LeBron on that set was it was great um, because he really is a pro, and him stepping into a real role and actually having to anchor a movie, you know, um, he just had a great work ethic and never complained. And you know, movie sets are not the same as it's not the same as playing ball. You know, we're it's fourteen hours sometimes. A lot of downtime, a right. lot of repetitive stuff, a lot of just, you know, you've done it. It's just, it, it, it's very different than what he was used to, but he there was no sort of lag time. He just dropped into it, and he's really good in it. And he's, it, it was, it, I love to see how serious he took it, and he wasn't, he didn't come on like the diva, and he really could have been, <laughs> but he didn't at all. He was just a team player, and it, we had a great time. That's great to hear. And, you know, word was uh, that he did, in fact, have a basketball court that was uh, there for him to make sure that his regular job could be attuned and had attention to it. So was he out there also uh, in the downtime getting his work in on that front too? Well, you know, on the downtime when you're working on the set, you kind of have to sit there because – you know, at any minute, they could be like, okay, we're ready for you, right. and you've got to come on. Um, but he was, you know, very 100 about his his sort of the physical work that he had to do. He was always being worked on. He was always, you know, had to eat at certain intervals. He was very – kept his body in shape. And he was still kind of, you know, dealing with that injury he was recovering from a little right. bit. Right, right. Um, so it was – he was always in the process. And when we would, you know, play for the movie – you know, he, there would be different gears of, <laughs> of LeBron play, you know, which was interesting to watch too. What do you mean? That, well, you know, you can't, you know, you can't go full out sometimes, and then sometimes they need you to go full out right. a couple times, you know, and try to figure out how to modulate that. And it was, <laughs> I was just always nervous anytime he went full out. I was like, please do not do, do not hurt yourself on this movie and have to like go explain it to the Lakers organization. Right. That, Oh, sorry, the season's over because I faced it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Don Cheadle here on the Rich Eisen Show. We were just talking about that movie for some reason just the other day because we always like watching sports movies years later to see the cameos, to see, right. you know, who was the stars of the day in that era. So the original Space Jam, like Sed Sabalos was in it. Sean Bradley was in it. Muggsy Bogues, you know, yeah, was in fun. it. So I, I just kind of dig, you know, what, what that might look like 10, 20 years from now when Space Jam 2 is ages, right? If it will age yeah. in that respect. And what's amazing is they can really, with, you know, the ability to, to face replace and do CGI. I don't, I don't know what the movie's going to look like. I don't know who's going to be in it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be in it. They may, <laughs> you know, put that my face. I think I think you'll be in it. Don Cheadle here. I hope you I, well, so what is your role in it then? I can't, Rich, we just went through this. I can't say anything else. Top secret. I've, been, I've said too much. Okay, said, said too much. much. All right, I don't want to get you in any trouble. All right, let's talk about Black Monday here um, and and um, how, you know, Sign of the Times is interesting um, about uh, what what this show is about and, and what fans should expect from season two. I'll give you the floor on that, Don. Well, I think, you know, the, the great thing about season two is it, you know, uh, continues to capitalize on what, happened in season one which is you know just insanity and ending the season with the crash and starting season two with sort of the fallout and where we find all of these players now and we're sort of spread to disparate ends of the of the world the financial world and uh some of us are dealing with politics right now there's some of us are still you know you know dawn has taken over the firm uh moe's on the run because he's a fugitive from the law 
uh, you know, Keith, Paul Shear's character is out there living his best life. So we've kind of blown it up in a good way, I think, and, you know, trying to figure out how to get the team back together, if they're going to get back together, what are they going to be like when they get back together? What's the toxicity toxicity level going to be like when they get back together? Pretty high. Well, and, and the, ca- the cast is amazing. I mean, we've had Paul Shear on the show. He's a diehard Clipper fan. Uh, and, um, you know, Andrew Rannells, Rashe- Regina Hall. Ken Marino um, is one of the most talented karaoke singers I've ever personally witnessed in my entire life, Don. I don't know if you've ever seen oh, his game man. on that front. No, we got to do that. We never got to, we never got to karaoke with him. Uh, he is truly one of the most talented people I've ever met and been around. No, that guy. He's amazing in the show and he plays, you know, twins in the show. <laughs> and that's great to watch him go through a scene playing all one side and then playing all the other side and having to act with himself. It's, you know, a stand with a tennis ball on top of it. And then <laughs> it to the side of it. You know, it's kind of crazy to watch. Well, uh, Black Monday, uh, tr- a tremendous show. Check it out on Showtime at 10 Eastern Time. Obviously, many of us have nothing but time on our hands because we're all practicing the smart thing of staying home if we can and social distancing and sitting back. It's a great way if you haven't uh, caught up on season one to do that in advance of season two that's up and running here, man. You're, you're, you're one of my favorite follows on Twitter, too, Don. You keep doing what you're okay. doing. Always great to talk to you, Rick, and good when we bump into each other out there. Let's make it more of a habit. You got it. You, uh, hey, last one for you. Uh, a lot of guys around here want to know if uh, we've seen the last of uh, War Machine. I, again, these are things I could talk about, but they have, like, this weird tracing ability to, <laughs> to find me. So. <laughs> Oh, okay. Man. All right. All right. I just, you know, that folks want to know, Don. Uh, I just, we don't, we don't need any trouble for you. That's all. We just want to make sure everything's good for you. You're, 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 good. you're, you're a good man, Don. Great to call. Uh, great to have you on the show. And let's, uh, let's keep in touch. Okay. Good talking to you, Rich. Be good. Man. Right back at you. There's Don Cheadle at Don Cheadle on Twitter and Instagram.